Welcome to the One a Day Painting Challenge. I'm Yvette, and in today's video, we're gonna paint this awesome painting. I'm gonna paint it live and show you step-by-step step everything I do and talk about all the tips and tricks of how I paint this painting. So I encourage you to paint along with me. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. That way, it'll make it easier for you to find the videos in the future. This is going to be so much fun. The first thing I'm gonna do is take the canvas out of the plastic. I'm gonna flip it over upside down and I'm gonna use my brush and I'm gonna go ahead and poke, press down, and because I have it face down on a table, it's not going to make a hole on the other side. And then I'm going to go straight and around. Notice how that makes it really super easy to then pull off the plastic. And also, because I use the table, to pop the hole, notice that my canvas does not have a hole in it at all. This is the easy way to do it. <laughs> okay, so now that we have our nice pretty canvas, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use a mechanical pencil and I'm going to roughly basically just the idea of where the flower is going. I'm not going to be too critical on on this whole piece. I'm just gonna have some fun. And if I need to use an eraser, okay, I use an eraser. So don't stress out, let it be what it is, let it just happen. Okay, that's gonna have to be fixed, but it's okay, I'm just blocking it out right now, and later I will go and fix it. Oh. I'm going to fix that, but right now just blocking it out. Okay, so that's the basic gist. I don't like where this pedal was going, so I'm going to go ahead and erase it. Okay, let's do that again. I like using the mechanical pencil because it just kind of helps me to be able to erase and to do my thing and we're just going to keep working it and working it until finally we get something we like. I kind of want this to go around. And notice I'm not pressing too hard. So when I'm doing this, I am not putting a lot of pressure onto erasing or drawing so I'm not poking a hole in my canvas. So this, I'm liking this. This is great. We can fix this over here. No stress, no anxiety. If this gives you stress, don't do it. We're painting because painting's fun. I mean, I'm having fun, right? So don't stress out. Also, we're going to paint over these lines too. These are just a basic idea to let us know about where we're going to put our stuff. We're going to go back in and fix all this stuff. That's working. This is... Okay. That's good. So now... Once I have a basic gist outline of where my flowers are going, I'm go my, the petals are going, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in a leaf. I'm going to make that a leaf. Now these petals are going to come off the canvas, so it's all going to be green. And there we go. So I can have a, they all have to kind of mimic each other. So that's going to be green. This is going to be green. They'll all be green. I just want to make sure that they're equal sides. I'm going to go draw the side. There's going to be some blue here. Okay, I like my leaf. Or, I mean, I like this petal. This petal's really tiny. He's got to get bigger. How does that look? A little better? Yeah, I'm liking that. It's working. I'm going to put a leaf here. And we're going to put another one here. This is a hibiscus flower. Um, I'm doing this completely for my brain. I don't have an image that I'm referencing. This is just something, I mean, I have a little hibiscus tree. So I just kind of, I've seen these guys a bunch. This is a little small. Make him a little bit bigger. Okay. Okay. I just don't like the angle of this guy. You know what? I know what the problem is. This one was too big. So I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. Now I've put one, two, three, four, five 
uh, petals and I put one, two, three, four, five leaves. The leaves, I'm going to make them kind of a little bit more pointy. There we go. Hmm. I feel like there's too much negative space over here. Doesn't it feel like that? That there's a lot of, there's a lot of space. We can fix that. We'll just make this guy a little bit fatter. We'll make this flower a little bit larger. And that'll fix that negative space right there, which will then make this guy a little bit bigger. And this guy's a little bit bigger too. So we'll make him a little bit bigger. There we go. Now we're taking up more of the space of the canvas. Now the leaf can kind of come out a little bit more than than the flower. Then it doesn't match, right? So we got to fix this guy. This guy's got to match. So basically what I'm going here is I'm trying to do symmetry in chaos. Like I, I want everybody to have its own little unique little moment here and they all have their own shape and they take up their own space in the world. This is going to have to be bigger now. Everything takes up its own space in the world. And it has their, every leaf has its own identity. Okay, that should be about me. I will make this guy a little small. I think I exaggerated him too much. Uh, you know what? We'll make bring this down. I am not the world's best drawer. Like, that's not really my strong suit. It's round. I don't want it to be round. I just got to remember when I do it to make it more pointy. Okay, that's good. That works for now. I'm going to go ahead and get all of my little thing eraser points, and I'm going to get them off. I don't recommend rubbing your canvas a whole lot, like with your hand, because then you get that um, lead all over the place. That's good. That works. This guy's going to have to get bigger. Okay, I got a gist. So now on my palette, I'm going to go ahead and add my background color first. I'm going to go with the blue. Originally, when I thought about doing this, I wanted to do a turquoise, but then I thought the turquoise is way too close to the green, so that didn't happen. Okay, so I like to start in one area and work my way around. I also like to do all the edges, so right now I'm just going to go ahead and paint the edges first. And I'm being very big with my marks and just trying to have lots of marks with the paintbrush. I don't know if you can really pick that up on the on the camera here, but uh, lots of little indentations and marks. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of the, the sides of the canvas. Now, I like painting the sides of the canvas because it feels as though the painting is finished when it's done. Um, I usually am mostly leaving my paintings finished versus the, the, the cool, not finished look. And so this just helps me for that. And then it also helps me save money with framing. Uh, framing can get quite expensive. I mean, if you're gonna spend all this time and effort to paint a really cool painting, it comes out awesome. I would prefer not to use a, a, a frame that I found at a discount store because just no, you know, like I want a nice frame, right? And that stuff can cost money after a while. And also I sell my cam my paintings I paint and then I go to craft fairs and stuff. I sell them online on my website. And so if they're, they're easier to ship, they're easier to move around, like it's just cheaper for the customer because you know I have to pass on that price to the customer. And then also if you frame your paintings, let's say you have this awesome painting and somebody just loves it, but then they're not happy with the frame that you picked for that painting, like it just doesn't match the rest of the frames that they have in their house. They're not going to buy your painting. So I just leave the framing up to them. Now framing some pieces are really cool. I mean, I do in my house have a couple that I've painted that I've framed that look really nice. 
I usually tend to, for what I'm doing, my house is a little bit more modern design. So I use black, I try to keep the idea as in my frames are all black and basic. Um, so that way they're matching. So I have a basic idea throughout, a continuity throughout the house. I recommend doing that. Of course, now it also comes down to the painting. Like if you're doing a beach scene, a wood frame would be totally cute for that. Um, so it's all in the design of what you're going for. So this is great. I'm liking it. It's going pretty fast. And I really enjoy, I'm going to be very careful here and not go into the leaf so I don't have to paint over a lot of layers with blue, of over the blue to get that green that I want. Um, I like acrylic paints because they're fast. They're to the point. Uh, but you have to work fast. Now, notice how I'm doing my brush strokes. How I'm wiping really quick I mean I'm not and I'm not going over places I'm just trying to cover up with blue and do you see how I've, I like I mean right here I've got like some darks and some lights together let it be what it is I'm gonna go ahead and do this for a minute this outskirts and then I'm gonna work on the shapes here uh, you can go over just once or twice if you know patch up little holes that you might see but I really like seeing brush strokes in backgrounds uh, it's kind of a cheat easy way to make a background so that way you're not doing like bunches of colors and getting all scientific and then of course the paint is going to dry extremely fast so you got to work it right so it's a whole to do so doing this method saves you time effort and energy and look at it I think that this actually is kind of cool it gives a little depth a little depth perception in there now the camera isn't picking it up as great as I can see it that it's doing it in life um, but in life this is looking pretty cool with these little marks uh, the brush I'm using is a square guy see he's square skinny and fat skinny and fat <laughs> so yeah just go ahead and I mean, just try to cover up all the white spaces. Um, now, you don't have to go blue if you don't want to. I mean, I like the color blue. Um, blue kind of mimics the sky. So, I mean, I usually tend to paint a lot of my backgrounds in blue because I like blue. <laughs> my husband likes blue. I've got a lot of blue in my house's accents. Um, the accent color in my house is blue. And I also like many different shades of blue because I feel like if you're always in the same, a lot of your paintings, if you're always in the same shade of blue, then that's cool, but it doesn't give like depth. The more that you give in shades of color, the more your paintings are going to start looking as though they're, they're more, there's more going on. Like you went to school, you actually learned, you took a moment, you thought about it and you worked really hard. Um, and by doing this method, if you see, there are some locations where there are darker parts of blue and lighter parts just by, it's a push-pull. So like I'm pushing it and pulling it off at the same time, the paint. And so by doing that, it's making these marks. And so it's kind of giving different shades within the blue. Don't fuss with it too much. Let it be what it is. Let it happen. Let it have its life one and done um i recommend the reason why we also pre-drew this is i recommend so that way because blue is a very dark color and i'm going to try to put yellow here and you have to put a lot of layers of yellow to cover up the blue and so if i paint over here all blue then it's like ah and it's going to take me many layers and i don't want to do that um i'm also like when i paint because one of the things that I do is I sell my paintings. I mean, this is how I pay my bills. Um, so I do put love into these. I think about them. But at the same time, time is money. Um, so also sometimes those happy accidents. When I'm going quick and I'm thinking, but I'm not thinking too hard about it, that's when I get happy accidents, like Bob Ross always says. And uh, I like it. So you just kind of got to go with it. You know, just don't stress out. A lot of my students, I see that that's the biggest thing. Even myself, when I was at the university studying, like, I felt my, I was always, no, no, no. And by doing no, 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 my brain all the time, yeah, my paintings, you could see it. Okay, so I was going to put some blue here. We'll work on that in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and try to work on this shape, okay? 
I'm not liking round, round. I'm just not into that. This is a petal, which I kind of want my petal here to be straight, like it's bent over. We're not going to see the entirety of this petal. I'm going to go in the little edge here so I can get all that little edge. And there we go. So I got an edge there, which I kind of want more pointy, but this is going to be kind of an edge here and it's going to be like it's flipping over, which you can kind of see the line, which sucks, right? So I'm going to go ahead and try to put some dark paint to try to mask over that line to see if I can hide it a little bit and camouflage it. Okay, so now we have another leaf here. Now this is going to go here. And you know, I think the leaves need to be more triangular. So we're going to triangulate this guy right there. That's looking good. Fill it in. So let it happen. Let it be what it is. But then also those little side, if you find yourself making a little line, go back over really quick before the paint dries to, uh, to mask it. Like keep turning your, your brush as, as I'm doing this, I do a couple and then I rotate my brush and then I do some more. So this is going to be a petal again, which also is going to be kind of flat, like it's turning. And then do you see that I rotate my brush a little bit? So as I'm pulling the paint I'm pulling it in a di different direction. It's coming. I'm liking it. This is really, you know, I would really put this painting as um, intermediate beginner level because it's actually quite easy. Um, it just takes time, patience, and love. Take a moment, but don't stress. Take a moment, but don't stress. Okay, so that's, that's, that's coming. I like that. It works. Okay. Um, let's see. This is going to be a leaf, which we could probably add some more here to give it, yeah, more of that triangular look. I'm going to add a little bit here because I like how this is really triangular. So I'm going to add some more here, try to flatten out that curve a little bit. And notice I turn my brush a little so I can... Make sure that all my brush strokes are in different directions. I'm going to add some over here too to try to triangulate that. Okay, so right here I notice I've got a lot going on in the same angle. So I'm going to go sideways a little bit and try to move it. Now when you work with oil paints, this trying to, oh no, go fast situation it's not that big of a deal when it comes to oils. But then, you know, you're taking, it takes forever to dry. And like, I'm trying to bust out a couple paintings a day. So that doesn't work for me uh, to have the long dry times. Okay, so now I'm just double checking, seeing, I mean, I got them lines, but what can I do, right? I mean, I could probably, there, break it up. If you add a little bit of paint where it's going to be dark, not a whole lot, just enough to break up those lines that we painted, that I drew, that I was like, eh, there. That kind of, oh, just a little bit. But then it's kind of got an aura around it now going on. I recommend not drawing with a pencil. You could do colored pencil, which probably in hindsight, I should have used a colored pencil. Um, okay, so we've got this. Now I've got these little guys. So this is going to be a leaf. This is a petal. This is a leaf. So I'm going to go ahead and get up here and make my little leaf. I'm going to do the sides first. I like doing the sides first. Then I'm going to come over and... Do this little edge here, the little corner. Trying to be mindful that I don't really go into the petal and the leaf a whole lot. The leaf is a little bit okay because we're going to add dark green, which is a hue really close to the blue. Okay, so the leaf to me is good, but I just don't know about this petal. I think I'm going to have to add some little more paint here. 
Okay. Yep. And I don't think I'm going to have any here. I think it's just going to be all green and all petal. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and do this one now. So we will remember we want it triangular and then we kind of wanted it round. Okay, that looks great. Now I'm trying to do the blue so that way I don't have to come back later and touch up any blues. Like this is the one and done situation. Okay, so that's working. I like that. I'm starting to feel that I need blue here now. So let's go ahead and this petal is going to be Mia-ish, right? Which would bring it down to Mia. Just keep working and working it. There we go. Get the sides. Remember the push-pull. So I'm applying paint and I'm scooping it up at the same time and it's leaving a little bit of paint behind on the brush. If this method is too tricky for you, just go ahead and paint like this. You know, whatever, situ whichever, just get the blue on the back. Um, because the other thing too is if we're always like in our head, no, 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 it's not going to happen. I put too much paint on the brush right there. I didn't need that much. So just, you know, let it be what it is. I'm going to bring this guy in a little bit. There we go, because that's a leaf. Which, this leaf is really skinny, right? And this is a kind of a skinny leaf, which makes me think that this leaf up here, too fat. So how do we fix that? We just bring in some, per bl uh, some blue right there. Skinny up that little triangle. Okay, it's working for me. I mean, maybe a little more skinnier would have been better. Hmm. Maybe I should make the leaves smaller than the than the flower itself. I mean, really, technically, they're they're actually bigger. Um. Hmm. This is impressionism, so just do your thing. I uh, we're kind of just making this up, like we're trying to be true to reality, but yet we still want to have you know some light, the artistic license. I'm not liking this over here. I think I might add a tad bit of blue to Mia. A little bit on the side. Okay, which made this leaf really small, so these are fat. Okay, but you're really not seeing it. Maybe if I just bring a little bit, just a little bit of blue to trick the eye. Not a whole lot, because I don't want this guy to be really skinny here. Just enough so that you could kind of see it. There we go. Just making this petal like really huge, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and make him a tiny bit smaller. Now when you add the blue, remember what I'm saying, it's hard to erase. Because then you're going to have to put lots and lots of layers above it. So that's like a whole to do right there. Just keep that in mind while you're adding the blue. So we're like trying to think about doing it in the negative way. Like the negatives of like photo. Yeah, there we go. I'm liking that. Loving it. It's working. One thing you can do that could help, which helps me a lot, is look at it from a different perspective, a different angle. I am so not liking that because the center of my flower is here. And look at all this that's going on. So I am going to end up making the flower smaller. Remember when I was like, no, it's too small. Because I did smaller, I, these the angles. So I'm going to go ahead and make these guys a little bit smaller. But really, this is the problem here. So let's make him smaller. I'll make him a little bit shorter too. How's that looking? Is it coming? 
Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, I like it. So he's getting smaller. Okay, so let's just make this guy a little shorter and smaller. The better you draw your flower in the beginning, the easier time you're going to have with actually like making it or painting it. Okay. Oh, that's a leaf and it should be pointy. I'm like looking at this angle. It's not pointy anymore. Not a pointy triangle. There we go. I'm thinking that maybe I should have used a square. Probably should have used a square canvas for this. Yeah. This canvas is 11 inches by 14. And I'm thinking if I paint this again, I'm going to do it in a square. Anyways, let's see it now from this angle. How do we like the background? I just feel that this part is great. This part could be maybe a little better. Mm hmm. Okay, that's working. I like that. Yeah, okay. I'll maybe color up one of these little, I see the lines and I don't like it. I'm going to go here and just kind of pull off some of the paint. It's all globbed on here and by doing this I'm redistributing and moving and blending more. Just felt like it was too like dotty. So I'm basically just rubbing off the paint really. There we go. That works like it. It works. Don't overthink it. I find myself doing that a lot. So I'm going to go ahead with my water, clean my brush. I recommend cleaning it good, making sure that it's all good. And then after you have your brush, go with your paper. I like to wipe it off. See how they're still blue? You really got to bend the bristles. Get all that blue out. Okay, so that looks good right there. So now I'm gonna take a few seconds and I'm gonna go ahead and with a hair dryer to speed up the process, I'm going to dry my painting. I recommend that you do this so that way you don't have boo-boos later just in case if like you're painting over here and then it's uh, like it, the paint spills or something or you're here with your arm and it smudges so yeah, go ahead and take a moment and dry your background. Now, as you know, I, the, the camera's not really picking it up, but I can see that some of this paint is uh, shiny. And when the paint is shiny, it is still wet. When it is no longer shiny, it's dry. Um, so, for the sake of the video, I'm going to continue. I'm going to go ahead now and do the leaves. Um, I like to work from the background in. So, I'm going to go ahead and I like, I'm going to go with some dark green first and then I'm going to layer. 
I'm going to do the easy version of a leaf. So I like this color. It's a nice pretty color. Um, I'm just going to wipe the color on. And really, as long as you get the green onto the canvas, I think whatever, however you do it is best. Um, one thing that I kind of like to do is if you notice, I'm going along the leaf. So that way, these little lines that my brush is naturally making, I'm kind of letting them happen. See that? See how there's a little line? Kind of letting them things happen. Now we will be covering up with some more greens, so it's just, you know, background little effect. Sometimes you got to let your brush do the work. So I'm going back and forth from the tip of the leaf to the base of the leaf, trying to get those edges nice and crisp and clear, which really, you know, if you're doing modernism, you really don't have to make them crisp and clear if you don't want to. It's all your storytelling and how you, how, what, how you're saying to the viewer, this is how I see a leaf. So that works. Working on those lines to get them extra pretty. I like that. That works. That's cool. Love it. Okay, so now I'm going to go and let's do another leaf. Let's do this guy. I'm going to add... Add the edges. This guy, I'm going to add the edges first, and then I'm going to fill it in to try to make him sharp. Make sure you don't go, if you go over the blue with a little bit of the green, it you don't really see it, so it's fine. But I would recommend try not to go over where there's going to be red and yellow. Because green is a very cool color, very dark, and so like when you go... And you're going to add your yellow. You're going to have to put a lot of different shades on. I really hope you're enjoying painting with me. I'm having a lot of fun doing this. This is like, I'm having a really good time. I've been looking forward to painting this one for quite some time. I really do admire these flowers. If you're liking this video, can you go ahead and give me a like on the video? Because then that'll signal to YouTube that it's a cool video. People like it. And then they're going to recommend it to more people. Which means more awesome people will see the paint, the video, and they'll be able to come paint with us. And we'll have a family of painters and it'll be a good time. So go ahead and give me a thumbs up. I'm going to turn the painting just to make it easier on my hands and my head so I'm not all crooked here. And I'm going to go ahead and, you know what, maybe we could change this center to be more mia, right? So if we're going to move this center to more mia then I can go a little bit deeper into here with my green and maybe by moving it over it might give it a better aesthetics because I want the flower to be off center uh, but I still want it to be on the canvas Also, while I'm on the subject, if um, if you haven't subscribed, I recommend going ahead and doing that on the video because that's another thing that triggers the YouTube algorithm, the computer to like recommend the video to other people and stuff like that. And I'm currently in the phase of brand new and I'm trying to go live, but they won't let me go live and do live video classes until I have a thousand subscribers and 400, 4,000 hours of watch time on YouTube. So until that happens, I can't go live, and if I'm live, I can answer your questions, like, on air, like, all together, because I'm sure the questions you have, other people are having the same questions too, right? And, like, me just talking into the camera feels a little lonely at the moment, because I'm like, hey, talk to me! I like being social when I paint. I don't, I, does it ever feel, do you ever have this feeling, like, when you're in your art studio, or you're in your kitchen, and you're all alone just painting, you're kind of almost like in a dungeon all by yourself, which can be cool. Some alone time is definitely awesome. But every once in a while, aren't you like, oh, I need to hang out with people. So yeah, um, go ahead and subscribe so I can get those numbers. And that way YouTube will let me go live and we can talk and socialize and hang out with each other. Um, so, and then also if you do that, then it's going to, every time I load a video, which is usually around once a week, it'll like automatically, it'll go into your feed and stuff. So that way you'll see 
you don't miss out because who knows I mean you don't have to paint all my paintings I mean but there might be one or two that you're like yeah that's pretty cool I want to try that so yeah um the edges go on the okay I'm gonna paint the edge and once I've got that paint on there then I'm gonna go back and kind of try to wipe push pull it off the extra color trying to still keep the integrity of them lines going on there we go and it looks cool I like it it's working I'm gonna rotate to the other one and I kind of wish I would have drew this a little better but it's okay Now, if you want to, um, you can also, like, print the picture the picture out. Like, you can go online, Google, or whatever, use this one as a template. And then you can use the grid method. I When I was in school, we did that a lot. And then I found the projector. <laughs> and then after that, that's my method of choice. So, it's really up to you and how transferring images onto Canvas is easy for you. Whatever you find the most comfortable with, go for that. Especially if you're just not really like, if you're more like just doing this as a hobby, then like you're not going to go and spend like 300 bucks on a projector or anything like that. I wouldn't recommend doing that. But if you're like doing it for like actually trying to pay your bills, I'd recommend, yeah, buy the better paint, buy the better brushes. Um... I'm using middle of the grade paint. I'm not using super expensive paint. Um, I feel that I'm constantly in a state of learning. Like I've been doing this for a really long time and I still feel that I'm improving on my skill. I feel that I'm getting better as I go. So because of that, when I'm in the art store, I'm like, yeah, middle of the road works just fine for me. Um, okay, so this is good. I like it. I'm going to take about a few seconds here and I'm going to go ahead and dry it. I recommend you do the same thing. looking beautiful notice I had some water right here on the leaf and what happened the water came over and it sat there for a minute and I didn't get it right away and it kind of pulled off the well it it dissolved the paint and then when I went to wipe it off it kept that little circle I'm just gonna leave that for character I want to have a lot of character in this painting so it's not supposed to be looking like a photograph that's I'm not going for that look right now I'm gonna go ahead and add some yellow and then I'm also going to go and add some red. Now, do you notice that as we go, that's how I'm adding the paint to my palette? Um, it's because it's acrylic and it dries really fast. And they stay moister longer when they stay in their little tubes. So, I'm going to go ahead and, and just do it little by little. Okay, so now I'm moving this center to meow-ish. So my brush strokes are kind of going to mimic a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and start with the light color first. I'm going to put some yellow in here. Cover this up. I recommend making on these flowers there hibiscus. I recommend making the lighter color the outside edge color 
and then the darker color because you know they come in many many colors and even you can use also use your imagination and pretty much do whatever color you want to your world so have fun with it put the favorite colors that you like well the, the accent colors that you have in your house uh, that you're doing use those colors uh, but I'm gonna come down with the yellow a little bit on both sides wipe some off that green if you wipe it off really quick see because i dried my leaves i'm able to wipe off the wet paint and it'd be fine because the under coat area is um that area is already it's already dry so it doesn't matter so it's kind of like how you erase with paints okay so now i'm going to be kind of liberal here put some i see that i've moved a little bit of green on here it wasn't fully dry i'm going to go ahead with my red and I wanted to move my circle, right? So I should have brought some more yellow down here. Wasn't paying attention. Add some true reds. And then I'm going to kind of start blending, which these paints, because they're not the best quality paints, they're going to start turning. It turns a little bit of a brown. Kind of an orange would be better, but it is what it is. Notice I haven't added more paint to my brush. Do you see that? I'm just rubbing it back and forth and blending and just kind of trying to get that shade. I also do the same on the edges here so they're not crisp and clear. I'm going to go ahead and wash my brush. When, when it comes to blending, I recommend washing your brush a lot. I'm going to go and blend these light edges first. So I'm going to work with a clean brush on the yellow part of the flower first. And then as I work, then I go into the red. Make sure that when after you wash your brush that you dry it um, pretty good. Sometimes you don't have to wash your brush. You can just wipe it off with your with your um, paper towel. Now, do you see that blend I've got going? You gotta work it, and you gotta go quick because it is acrylics. So notice how I'm only doing one leaf or one petal. I only want to do one petal. I'm not trying to like do the whole flower right now. When I do flowers. That's pretty much my basic rule for myself on how I do them, that it's one petal at a time, one leaf at a time. Take my time, enjoy the process. Okay, well it still kind of stayed there. So what can we do? We can take off all the paint. We can go back in with some yellow. Add some yellow over here. Add some true yellow up here just to, you know, have further distinction between the colors. Keep having some red that gets up here, and I don't want that red. It works. I like it. It's coming. Okay, so now let's uh, do the next one. I'm going to go ahead and do this one. I'm going to wash my brush all the way. I'm going to start with the yellow. Oh, whoops. Wipe that off. Okay, start with the yellow. Have a good time with the yellow. Now, because this one is bent over, it's going to have a little bit more red here, right? So, but I still want to have that yellow, the presence. I'm going to have to go back in with some green and edge that. But I still, I'm going to have a little bit of yellow. But mostly it's going to be red. This was both this one was supposed to be bent over, but with the whole situation of the flower it just wasn't working. So this is going to be the bent over one now. I'm going to go with the red, add some at the base here, which I'm trying to There we go. Move that the circle over a little. Add some red in the middle. Okay, I feel like I have too much on my brush now, so I'm going to wipe it off. I'm 
I'm going to go back in here and blend. Notice how I'm rotating my brush a little bit. As, the, as it goes, I'm like turning it in my hand. So that way the one side that was exposed to the yellow stays on the side that's yellow. See what happens how I moved the, I did a brush root stroke really quick and it moves some red onto the yellow area and I don't want that. So then take it, wipe it off and then blend again. Keep going. Blendy, blendy. Just keep working it. I'm wiping off some of that red. It's got too much on there. Just keep working it and working it and cleaning and wiping my brush. Get a lot of that paint off. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, take a moment, wash my brush all the way. I'm going to dry it with my paper towel. Go back in with some yellow. I'm going to go over this little blue here because i got to really cover that blue up. So I'm just going to let that be for a minute. Let it dry. There we go. Don't want to overwork that. I added some more yellow, but I don't want to overwork it. Let it be there for a minute. And I could probably blend some yellow down in. There we go. Now this edge, I'm going to go ahead and let that dry and I'll come back to it, especially with this. I'm going to have to go back in and edge it with some blue. But do you see what I mean? How this right here, I painted yellow, but yet you can still see the blue through the yellow because it's a dark color. Okay, so let's go ahead and I guess we'll do this one. Now you could, if you wanted to, let this completely dry and then also go back over it repeatedly again and blend all over again and again, however many times you want to. I recommend allowing your paint to have time to dry before you go mess with it many many times like sometimes you just got to let it be if it's not turning exactly how you had envisioned in your mind that's okay I mean you're learning and we're trying to have our own unique styles and individuality when it comes to painting your unique voice so if your painting looks exactly like mine you're doing great but all you're doing is copying I want you to have your own artistic license and expression and voice. I want to see what you create and how awesome and cool your brain works. So don't get hard on yourself. I know that right now I'm pretty p angry at myself because it's not what I envisioned, but it's how it's happening. So it's, it's working. It's coming. And also there is this whole deal that paintings first get ugly before they get beautiful. And I really feel like I'm in that state right now with this painting. That, yeah, okay, it's not looking that great, but I keep working it, keep working it, and eventually it'll do something cool and amazing. I've noticed it in the past. I feel everybody says I do wonderful flowers and I like them and they're great but like I feel that sometimes in the past I was blending a little bit too much because I'd get like really into it and then I would step back from my painting and I would be like oh it's just too much like it's too much of a blend which can be cool the more blend you have the more realism but I've noticed that when I'm selling paintings I tend to, it's more lucrative for me, and I happen to sell more paintings of mine that are modern art, which is everybody says they like classical and realism, but I just can't seem to sell, I don't know, maybe my realism just is that bad, <laughs> but they just sell better. Impressionism and modernism, 
Because I, I know there's not that many people out there doing it and selling that type stuff at the craft fair. So, like, my booth always stands out. Like, you, my booth is definitely memorable. Um, I try to paint things that are, like, people would want in their house. So, I'm not trying to paint, like, really weird off-the-wall art that's just, like, what what is that? Um, but at the same time, I don't want to be looking like the lady that's next to me in her booth, you know? Because I want to be like, well, if you want it, it's here, it's now. And people kind of, you know, it's the whole deal. It's here and now. Also, I've noticed the videos that I've been doing that are in modern art tend to do a little bit better um, in ranking-wise than other. They get a little bit more viral than the other stuff, so... Yeah, so that's what I'm going for with this flower. It's coming. It is coming. I'm liking the background. The background works. Happy little painting. I hope you're enjoying it and having fun, too. If you get a chance, if you want to be really brave, let me know. Let me see. Like, send me a... Um, Put in the comments of this video the painting you did. I want to see a picture of it. I want to see how cool it turned out. And even if, you know, sometimes failures happen too. If it's not your best work, you know, share it with me. Maybe I might have some ideas or pointers or something that that I'm not taught discussing in the video. It also helps me as a teacher to be able to be like, okay, well, we need to work on this and we need to work on that. So that way I know other videos that I can make and classes I can teach that it might be able to help. Um, but I'm sure your painting's awesome, too. See how the yellow with the blue, how it's interacting? So you always got to think, the dark and the lights. Uh, there are, is some thoughts and theories about you only paint all the light colors first and then you go in with the dark colors. There are some, I, I took a class and the teacher was very adamant about that. Um, but, I don't know, as paint as you go. Sometimes when it comes to art, there have been times where I feel as though I'm just making this up. And that's great. When you get to that state, when you're there, when you're just like, let's go. Let's see what happens. That's when some of my really coolest paintings that I'm like, I love too much that I could never sell. That's when those happen. When I'm in that mindset of just let her happen. So, um, so I, uh, lived quite a large portion of my life in Mexico, and over there they have this drink called Jamaica, and it's a tea, and it's made out of the petals of these flowers. I enjoy Jamaica a whole bunch, and it brings me back to my childhood, and it's just I like Jamaica. I think, though, it is kind of an acquired taste. I grew up drinking it, so for me... It's pretty good, but I've noticed when I give it to like my husband, he he didn't grow up in Mexico, so like he's like, oh, it's, it's really bitter. Um, so I when I make it, I add extra sugar for him. But uh, it's a really refreshing drink. So basically, what they do is there's these Jamaica farms that are hibiscus farms. They grow these plants, and they're well, they're plants. They're like trees. Some of them are miniature. They can also grow to be really big. There's a lot of different varieties. Um, but usually they'll use like the, the purple and the red flowers. And so they take the, the flower grows and then the farmer will go and prune the tree and take these flowers. Then they'll dry the flowers, get them all dried. Um, now, nowadays they use machines back in the Indian days, they would just put them on like a tarp back in the day. And, uh, cause this is a drink that is derivative of, um, the Indians of Mexico. They're the ones that kind of like invented it. And so they would dry it, like lay it on the floor, dry it. Um, and then when they, then you can have it to store for like forever. Um, you can do it with flowers that are fresh, like from your garden. I've tried that. Um, I don't know, maybe because I'm just, you know, I'm not a farmer. My little experience didn't come out that great. It was better than just buy the stuff at the grocery store. In Mexico, they sell them at the grocery store. Like, it's just a, like, it's just another thing. I don't really see them in the United States, though. It's not a, 
I haven't really been to the grocery store and been like, oh, look, Mica. <laughs> it's mostly in the Mexican food markets that I've found it in the United States. Uh, but in Mexico, it's like all over the place. So Mica is just a thing. Um, and they're pretty flowers. When you buy them at the grocery store, they kind of are like a little bit black. Really dark purpley black because they're all dried out. Um, it does take to make like a gallon of that tea, uh, which is just tea, right? Um, so you put it in the water, you boil the water, all the stuff gets in there. Then you add the sugar. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's very, I'm going to, oops, I went red here. Wasn't supposed to, but I did. Oh, well. Um, so, so you boil the water, you get it hot, you add them. I don't put them in any kind of a strainy device or anything. I just put them straight in the boiling water. I have an electric teapot that I use and I just stick them in there and then because a teapot when I pour the the tea the electric teapot it kind of strains it for me and gets out the flowers because you don't eat the flowers. I mean you could if you want to but I, I mean I don't and I've never been to a restaurant where that's like a thing. Uh I wiped off some of the blue. It wasn't all the way dry. Uh, okay, so yeah, it's 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 a good. So if you ever have the opportunity, I recommend to have some very refreshing. And I have some in my kitchen right now, and I should have made for this class so I could just be sipping on it while I'm painting the flower. Oh, why did I think of that? Ugh. Oh well. Okay, so this is good. Good, good, good. I'm hating this flower. I'm sorry to say, but I think this is going to be one of my duds. Um, now, duds happen. They really do. Um, I have duds in every third to fourth painting. I'm like, oh, I don't like it. Um, and then they're... I've noticed the more that I paint repetitive things that I've already painted before, like when I do them quite often, you know, like people, they tend to not be as duddy because I've painted it a million times. Um, this is the first time I painted a hibiscus flower in a couple of years. I mean, really, in like probably 10 years since I painted one of these flowers. So I'm not really liking it. But remember what I said, you know, like it comes. There's an ugly state and then eventually the pretty state happens. You just have to give it a minute so that it can occur. It just has to... And then don't overthink your painting too because that's how you get duds too is by like what I'm doing here. I'm overthinking and overanalyzing and doing. So that happens also. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take a few seconds and go ahead and dry what I got here. We're going to continue working. I just... We're going to dry this for a minute. Looking pretty good. Yep. So now I have some, we're going to make these leaves extra cool and put a little bit more effort into these leaves. Um, let's see. I th I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my same brush, my little square guy that I have here. See how he's square and rectangular and then skinny. It's the brush I've been using for the entire uh, class. I'm going to go here and just kind of get up in there and work on these leaves a little bit. That works. I'm just make the little edges really nice and pretty. I think I'm going to leave that dot. <laughs> I like it. 
It's like dew. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my, my canvas with these little edges. Um, so I've been having a hard time coming up with like ideas because I've kind of painted already a whole bunch of things and I'm always trying to be like new and different but yet still not have like really odd imagery. So like do you have any ideas of what like do you like can you give me some inspiration as to what you would like to paint next for like another video? Like what type of um what type of painting would you want more flowers like a barn maybe I, I do a really cool barn I've I have Bob Rossed that many times and I've totally got it down on how to make a barn so we could totally I could show you my processes I take the Bob Ross idea but then I've tweaked it a little bit to make it my own my own voice and so I do what he does but I've got some extra little things that um, that I do to I just feel as though some of sometimes some of his paintings they don't look like homey and lifelike so like I like he just does the barn but like I add the person and like I add a little animal and I uh, yeah so I try to make it like it's a barn that's like actively being used at the moment so that's how my barns are a little bit different than his. I put a sign of life, that life is occurring and happening. Like there's some, maybe some fish hanging on a fish hook. Like the guy's not there, but you could see he went fishing or there's like a deer or something going on. Some vegetation growing, which Bob Ross really good at doing vegetation. Okay, so that works. I like it, love it. It's great. Don't mess with it too much. Let it be what it is. Okay, so... I'm going to go ahead and the edges to me are just not working. I'm having issues, I'm not really overlapping it too much. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to outline this and turn this into pop art. So we're changing genres. Going to go with some black. I don't need a whole lot. Just a little tiny bit of black. I'm going to go with my tiny little skinny brush. It's one of these guys little tiny tiny little brush and I'm gonna go ahead and do outlines and that by doing this it's gonna make it a Hawaiian pop art look we're gonna go ahead and outline so this this painting is not meant to look like a photograph we're not doing that we don't want a photograph well I mean yeah okay if you want a photograph but that's not what I'm going for right now I'm going for fun and modern It's wet. I gotta be very careful that I don't go in the wet. See how it just kind of come into life? The flower. Oh, this is looking really good. I love it. Flowers, I feel, can oftentimes be easier than humans in that you can be like, take an artistic license and be like, yeah, I meant to do that. That was on purpose. And with a human, then they're like, well, it's not really anatomical and the leg is like way longer than it should be. And, and the flower, because it's, it's bio aesthetics. So it's just doing its thing. If you like have the opportunity, go and stare at a flower and take like a moment where you're actively thinking about its symmetry and just stare at it. And one thing that you're going to notice is that it's a beautiful chaos that's occurring within the flower. That the flower is happening but yet it's not like all super like symmetrical and the right side of the flower is not really equal to the left side. 
And you know, you can also say that too when you're drawing people. Like, the right side of my face doesn't look like the left side a lot because I have freckles. Um, mostly that's the reason. Um, my teeth are a tiny bit crooked. Now I know you can't see it in a photo, but I live with myself. So I can see how my teeth, is. they have a little crookedness to them. Uh, my freckles are not really, like I have one right in the middle of my forehead, but it's kind of off center a little bit. Um, one of my ears is a little bit short like it's a little bit smaller on the side of like lower on the side of my face than my other than my other ear is um so there are little tiny things like that with humans uh but however humans aren't having that difference like flowers are flowers are just they have way more going on that are different having a lot of different differences Oh, this is so pop arty. Mm. So when I was in school at the university, we um I actually had to study all the different um genres of art. And so we would have assignments where we would be given in this art form or this in this perspective paint. So, like, Picasso did a series of bulls, and you could just totally see that the dude was really good at what he did, because he went from classical all the way to modern, like, and then he did all the little genres in between. So, he drew a bull, and he made it look like a photograph, and then he redid it again and made it, like, eh, and then eventually, I mean, he did, I think, there was about 12 or 13 different drawings he did, and... As he could, the more he kept drawing the bull until all the way the last one he did, it was one continuous line. And they all look like bulls, like all of them. I believe those paintings right now are hanging up in Italy in a museum. I don't remember the museum's name. But that's actually something really cool to do as a homework assignment. Um, I actually, I remember the big one because I did it as a huge project that I had for a final. And so I found an image in a magazine of a really cute guy. And so I was like, yeah, okay, I'll draw him. It was a fa it was in vogue. And so I took the image and I drew it as close as I could to looking like the image only using charcoal. And so that was cool. It came out great. I was pretty impressed with myself. And then, after I did that, my teacher was like, okay, now go crazy. So, like, I went crazy three different times with the same image. So, like, I kept that one, and then, like, I did the same size, and then I went, like, into cubism. And it was kind of fun. Like, I totally distorted the image, and, like, it got me out of... Doing that exercise got me out of my comfort zone of thinking all my images have to be perfect and beautiful and pretty and symmetrical and like the nose has to be like a, t a tiny little button nose and you know the images of what we think of beauty right and doing it it got me out to I totally exaggerated proportions and stuff like that and then he ended up looking like a clown. But he looked like a clown that would have been like turn of the century type style. Um, he, it, the, I romanticized it a little bit, you know, and so it looked pretty cool. So to this day, out of I've done a lot of thousands of paintings, but that one, I get a lot of people that are like, "Yeah, that's the one," because <laughs> I have them. And I have there's three of them, so I have them all side by side together in my portfolio, and they're pretty cool. I don't sell all my artwork. I really don't. I only sell the ones that I'm not in love with, that I'm not like, yeah. Um, but really, though, also, I'm not trying to go and sell my really bad Iggy stuff either. Like, if I'm not going to hang it on my wall, I wouldn't expect anybody else to do the same. So I do put, I mean, effort and love into my paintings. Okay, eventually these lines are going to come in to give more depth, but right now I'm trying to mostly focus on the outside. Oh, I'm 
turned back into the green, but it's black, so it's okay. Went into the yellow a little bit. Okay, so let's see, we got this line. Now be very careful when you're doing this that you're not smudging everywhere because like, um, it's not picking up on the camera that well, but I can see in life here that like a lot of the black is very shiny. Okay, so now I'm going to put this the way it's going to be on the wall. Oh, I went into the yellow a little. I'm going to put this the way it's going to be on the wall, and then I'm going to go in here and just try to... How are we going to talk about this? Notice how I'm kind of curving the insides a little bit. By doing this, you're allowing for space for there to be like overlapping of the flowers a little bit. A little bit of overlapping is okay, but not a lot because they're supposed to be next to each other. Well, it is what it is. Let it happen. Let it be. Letting them kind of join and come together. Now I'm just going to go ahead and outline the petals only and not do the leaves just to give contrast and to make it something new and fun. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the water, let it get clean for a second. I'm going to take a few seconds and I'm going to dry what I have. Now, as I'm drying the painting, I always like to stare at it and see what are the little things that I could fix. I didn't really see anything I wanted to touch up. My original plan was I was going to do little veins and a light green, but then I feel as though it might make it look a little cartoony at this point because these lines that I've already made in the leaf, I'm really kind of liking it. It's flowing, so I'm going to go ahead and not do what I originally planned. Okay, so I washed my brush. I'm going to go and dry it really well. Especially because that all that black on it. So now I'm going to go ahead and get in the yellow and be very liberal and thick with the yellow. And I'm going to go in the middle and I'm going to make the... Oh geez, I don't know exactly what it's called. Oh, the little line. I mean, I know it's how the plant makes babies. The pollinator, the housing unit for the pollinator. I mean, technically what it is is a fallopian tube for the flower. 
um, for the pollinating when the, I think hummingbirds really like these more than the bees. I have seen it, my plant, I've seen both. I've seen a hummingbird and I have seen bees. I did see a ladybug once too. Um, I mean, I wasn't really paying that close of attention to the flower, but I've seen them around. Okay, so that looks good. I'm liking it. I do feel like he needs to be a little bit bigger. A little bit longer. Maybe we can make it a little fatter. How about that? A little fatter. Not much, though. I'm going to kind of glob up this paint a little bit, which by globbing up the paint will give it a different texture compared to how I painted the the um, the petals really smooth and pretty. So when it dries, it's going to be a little bumpy, which is kind of not how I would see it in life because these things are actually quite smooth and cylinder. Um, but we're doing modern pop art here, so that's okay. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and make it a tiny bit boxy on the top. It's going to be really cool. You're going to love this. It's going to be great. It's a little boxy on the top. It's kind of triangly, actually. Okay, so that's great. I like it. Go ahead and wash and clean my brush. And then I'm going to go and put little tiny red dots. And put little doop, 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 doop all the way around. Doop, doop. There we go. I love it. Okay, now let's put some on the yellow. Doop. I'm getting fresh paint every time I put a doot. There we go. Every time I do a little doot, I'm going to do a couple more. Just, you know, just because I feel like it. Do as many as you want. Whatever you feel is good and aesthetically pleasing. I think that's working for me. Some of your little dots can be big, some can be little, just as long as they're, they're there. And there you have it. You know what? I should blend it. I should. But will I? No. This is pop modern art. I'm not trying to be a photograph. So I hope you enjoyed this. This was like so much fun. Please, 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 please let me see your painting. I want to see how cool it turned out. Like I want to be all like, yeah, let's, let's have a fun party showing, uh, showing each other our paintings. I'm very interested. Um, and also I like to end all my videos by saying, if you haven't had a moment today, please go make time and put effort and tell your loved ones that you love them. Be with them. Give them a hug. Call them and tell them you love them. Spend some time with your people. Because you never know if it's going to be the last time you see them. And besides, they're your people. So go and have a good day with them. I will see you later. And until next time, have a good day. Thanks for watching. Push the purple flower to subscribe and you can watch all kinds of awesome videos.